So let's look at worldwide emissions and how that correlates with energy, wealth, and our perception of happiness. Happiness is proportional to wealth because we need wealth to provide us with our needs. Wealth is proportional to energy use because it's through the conversion of energy that we generate wealth. Energy use is proportional to carbon dioxide because most of our energy is converted through combustion. And now we have a conundrum because we're thinking that carbon dioxide isn't so good anymore. And this creates unhappiness. But let's just take a look at the first part. And so if we were to graph happiness against, say, wealth, or any of these because they are proportional to each other, we'd get a curve that's not a straight line. It looks something like this, and that would probably be a log graph because of the vast disparity in wealth, energy use, and carbon dioxide emissions. For instance, if this was Bill Gates, and this is the guy who created Facebook, uh, this is someone who has only three mansions, this is simply a millionaire, and this is your struggling college student here just getting by, we can see a huge disparity in wealth, yet we still have enough to provide us with our needs and we're all relatively happy. However, if you slide to the extreme left of the graph, people are so poor that they cannot provide their family's needs or health care, and they see family members die because of this. Certainly, this is an unhappy situation. So let's take a look and see if the data support this kind of shape. We go to gapminder.org. And we can take established statistics and create our own graphs. So let's take a look at CO2 emissions versus energy use energy per person. So we see a very linear behavior between energy use per person and emissions per person. And we can expand the axes Okay, each circle represents a different country and the area of the circle is proportional to the population. So yellow are the Americas, for instance, the United States. And we can see the United States has an average emissions per person of 19 tons of carbon dioxide. And on the left, utilizing about 7.8 tons of oil equivalent. So that's uh, the units here are tons of oil equivalent of energy. We have China in red, Asia's in red, blue is India. The African states are in dark blue. And we can see that there is a clear linearity between carbon dioxide emissions and energy use. How about wealth? So how about income per person against energy use? Okay, and this is log let's make it linear and make it 100%. And again, we see that income and energy use are very proportional. And we can expand the axes and take a look again. Let's expand the axes again. Okay, so here we can see even on all scales, Income and energy use are largely proportional. So we get a very different shape when we have a happiness indicator, for instance, life expectancy. Life expectancy only correlates with income when people are very, very poor. We take a look at the United States at about $42,000, $43,000 per person per year. And we can see we don't live any longer than, for instance, Puerto Rico, Chile, Costa Rica, Cuba. Okay, Costa Rica 79 years old, United States 78 years old. Only, and, so, and Cuba goes all the way down to um, about $9,000 per year. So less than one fourth the GDP per person than the United States. Only when people are very poor, when we're down to $700 a year on the order of a dollar a day, for instance, in Congo. 
How about if we look at another one, like child mortality? Now, this is going to be an upside down happiness graph because, you know, it's a sad thing when child mortality is high. We see that wealth has no effect on child mortality until people are very poor. Okay, again, the United States does not have as low child mortality, 7.8 per thousand, as does Cuba, 6.5. And only when people are very poor, only in Africa, where the GDP is, is on the order of a dollar a day, do we see very high mortality rates. So how do we measure happiness? For instance, there is the human development indices. The Human Development Index is a conglomeration of wealth, health, and education. You know, once we have a reasonable level of wealth, which we can see is, is probably less than a fourth of what the average American makes, the average United States citizen makes, our needs are met and our happiness does not hinge any longer on wealth. So I showed this to my friend Barbara who's finished her PhD at Berkeley a couple years ago and she said, no, 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 Pete, you can't have a graph like this. It has to be flat because I study this and I know it is flatter than flat once we get to a point where most human needs are met. So, okay, we flattened out. But then it turns out that the happiness, people's happiness is actually culturally dependent. So if this is the world average, we may find that the United States, well, in case you didn't know, internationally, we're known as ill-humored folks. And so the United States would be less happy than the world average. and. I've lived in the Fiji Islands, and I can tell you that these are very happy people, and you can try to be as happy as them, but you probably will not succeed, and you definitely won't succeed by gaining wealth. Furthermore, there's noise in the signal, of course. It's not this clean. You have your Ebenezer Scrooge that are rich and Tiny Tim's family. There are a lot of variations amongst different people. And so what does happiness correlate with if it doesn't correlate with wealth? Most studies claim happiness correlates with the number of meaningful relationships that a person has. And so it's kind of interesting if we look at how much time and energy in our education system, for instance, that we dedicate to forming meaningful relationships and keeping them, and how much we spend on... Um, on gaining employment that will bring us wealth. And now and how in doing so we propagate the this, this same pursuit of wealth and economic development at the cost to the environment that will no longer increase our well being. So for instance in, in China, this is from the Los Angeles Times, up until very recently there was a single minded pursuit of increased well being through increased wealth. And what we're finding is that after having increased the GDP per person fivefold in half a generation, folks are, are not understanding why is it I'm not happy like I thought I would be. And they're, they're finding that happiness is not even correlated with how wealthy you are compared to how wealthy you used to be because people get acclimatized to that, to seeing that, yes, I'm used to getting wealthier and wealthier, but happiness is mostly correlated with how wealthy you are compared to how wealthy other people are around you. And so this is a, a very, puts us in a very difficult situation of wanting to outdo each other, again, at the detriment of the environment and the common good. But regardless of the reality that moving in this direction does not bring us better well-being or happiness, it is still the economic imperative that this is a direction we have to move. In order to get more happiness, we need to generate more wealth. This comes through increased energy use and will result in larger carbon dioxide emissions. This is a direction that countries seem to want to move in.